The process of identifying and naming all known organisms, living and extinct, is a huge first step towards the goal of systematics, but naming organisms is only part of the work. The real challenge is to group everything, from bacteria to brontosaurus to blue whales, in a way that reflects their evolutionary relationships. Over the years, new information and new ways of studying organisms have produ produced some major changes in Linnaeus's original scheme for organizing living things. So let's take a look at how things have really changed. Remember, wide right, skinny left, take the notes on the right hand side however you want to. See you on the next slide. When Linnaeus first devised his classification system, the scientific view of life was much, much simpler. Animals were mobile heterotrophs, plants were photosynthetic autotrophs that stayed in one place. That's pretty much all Linnaeus knew. So he had the kingdom Plantae, or plants, and Animalia, or animals. As science and technology progressed, we learned more and more about the natural world, and we revised Linnaeus's system as we see in the chart above. We added, and sometimes in one case you'll see, eliminated kingdoms. With the invention and the refinement of the microscope came the classification of protista. These are the little one-celled creatures that people saw and labeled animalcules, kind of like animal molecules. Continued study led to separating out mushrooms, yeasts, and molds from plants into the kingdom fungi, creating another kingdom, Monarin or Monera, from microorganisms that lacked a true nucleus. This was in the 1950s. That's pretty much all we, all we knew. And this classification stood for decades. This is the classification I learned in high school back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. As evidence about microorganisms continues to be uncovered, biologists have most recently gotten rid of the kingdom Monera and divided it instead into two distinct kingdoms of eubacteria and archaebacteria. This took place in the 1990s. The differences between these two that have been discovered are very great as great as the differences between plants and animals. So that brings the total number of kingdoms from Linnaeus' two original ones to six currently. Genomic analysis reveals that the two main prokaryotic groups are very different from each other, as we just said, more so than previously thought. This has led to the creation of a new taxonomic level that scientists now recognize, that of domain. As evidenced by the chart above, domain is even more inclusive than kingdoms. The domains include eukarya, which includes all plants, animals, fungi, and protists. In other words, all organisms with a true nucleus. We'll talk more about eukarya on the next slide. Archaea includes organisms that are unicellular prokaryotes living in very extreme environments, usually without oxygen, like the volcanic vents you see here in this picture, and also in the deepest parts of the ocean. They do not have a true nucleus, but they contain nuclear material, the prefix arca means original or first. So these would be the first living things biologists hypothesize. This is an electron microscope picture of some methanogens that might be found in this type of its extreme environment. This would be an example of an, an organism that belongs to the domain archaea. So archaea is the domain, archaebacteria is the kingdom, and they're both the same. They're prokaryotes, they're unicellular, and they live in very, very extreme environments. Members of the domain bacteria are unicellular prokaryotes also, but 
These are very, very ecologically diverse. They're found in soil, they're found in animals, they're found in many, many different places, both with and without oxygen. And they can even be deadly parasites. This is a back picture of a very common bacteria, in fact, one that you might have had. This is the bacteria Streptococcus, and it causes strep throat. So, the domain Eukarya has a true nucleus, and it includes protists, fungi, plants, and animals. The domain Archaea includes the oldest bacteria fossils that live in extreme environments, and they do not have a true nucleus or mitochondrial material. And lastly, the domain Bacteria includes all what we call true bacteria, very ecologically diverse, living many, many places on Earth, including in your body. So let's take a look at the domain Eukarya. As we just learned on the previous slide, the domain Bacteria includes only the kingdom Eubacteria, and the domain Archaea includes only the kingdom Archaebacteria. These most likely will expand in the not too distant future, but for now, that's all you need to know is bacteria, archaea, eubacteria, archaebacteria, same thing. The domain eukarya, however, is the one that we mo know most about, and it's the one that we're going to talk about from this point on. It consists of all organisms that have a true nucleus, including Linnaeus's original multicellular autotrophs, like you see here in this picture, or plants, and multicellular heterotrophs, like we see in this picture, the plant and animal kingdom. As the microscope became better and better, biologists were better, better able to study these little one-celled organisms or animal, animalcules that they discovered. And in 1866, a biologist named Ernest Haeckel proposed the first change to the Linnaean system. He suggested adding the kingdom Protista to include all unicellular organisms that were being discovered. Here's a drawing of some of the unicellular organisms he observed with his microscope. Pretty diverse and interesting, I'd say. Protists contain eukaryotic unicellular organisms that are not plant, animal, or fungi. If you take a look at the diagram on page 526, 527 in your textbook, you will see that protista is not a true clade since it fails the SNP test. There are examples of protista in, very, in some very different clades. As scientists learn more and more, this will most likely better be, be better defined in the decades to come. But for now, protista is kind of a catch-all kingdom and not a true clade. In the 1960s, Robert Whitaker proposed adding another kingdom, the kingdom fungi. This kingdom includes plant-like organisms that do not photosynthesize, but rather they obtain their nutrients by breaking down dead organic material. Seems like we've heard that somewhere before. Mushrooms are the most well-known fungi, but it also includes other organisms as well, such as the fungus that causes athlete's foot. Ew. It doesn't really look like that on your foot. Um, it really looks just kind of like white and scaly, but it is a fungus. So, let's take a look at the next slide. So, what is it we need to know from this section? Not a whole lot of details. The meat of this unit was in section 2 over cladograms. You need to know the three domains. What are they? And what are the main characteristics that define them? What are the six kingdoms within those domains? And what are the characteristics that define those six kingdoms? Remember, with eubacteria and archaebacteria, the characteristics are going to be the same as archaea and bacteria. So don't worry as much about those two. Really focus on the eukarya. Also, what has been responsible for the changes that have happened in the Linnaean system? In other words, why did they take place? B 
be able to describe them or explain them in some detail. So, that's it for now. Draw a line across the bottom of your paper, look back over your notes, and write a summary about this section. What'd you learn? Then, go back over your notes one more time and either get with a study buddy or work on your own and come up with some questions. They might be questions you still have that weren't answered. They might be questions you think could be on a test or a quiz. Remember, three level one at least. Level one questions are book only questions. Two level two questions, book and brain, and one level three question, brain only. You can always write more than that, but you shouldn't write less. That's it for now. Bring your notes to class on Monday, Tuesday, and be ready for the test on Wednesday, Thursday. In the meantime, here's some animal puns to study. We'll see you in class. Bye, guys.